guys, it's Stephanie Weaver from artpause.com and today what I'm going to do is show you a painting that I did of this dog. Uh, her name is Brinkley and Brinkley is a American Pit Bull who is available at the Greater Huntsville Humane Society. She has re recently undergone a trachea stent surgery um, and the whole reason that she had to do that is somebody never adjusted her collar. So what had happened was the collar was actually embedded into her skin. So apparently they never adjusted it since she was a puppy. And so now her trachea was the size of a pencil. So she couldn't even play because she could get too winded and she wouldn't be able to breathe. So that trachea surgery was done at Auburn University and it cost over $4,000. So what I'm trying to do is actually raise awareness about Brink Brinkley here so that, um, you guys can help donate to Brinkley's surgery in the Greater Huntsville Humane Society, who's a no-kill shelter. What I'm going to do is actually put this painting up for auction on eBay. And so check out for eBay. I'll post a link in this video. And it's going to go for auction. All the proceeds will go towards the Greater Huntsville Humane Society. And then any prints that I make, and I'm going to do a limited number, also, that money will go to the Greater Huntsville Humane Society. Again, this is Brinkley. She's an American pit bull, and she is absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm going to go into how I painted her. And I took two hours in this painting because it was a, a practice painting. It's just my daily practice where I try and go quickly, stay loose, stay active, and really play with some different techniques and different brushes and see what I can do. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoy this video. Check out Brinkley. Be sure to check out her eBay listing so that you can help with her medical pay, medical bills. Okay, thanks guys. As with most of my paintings, I start with the eyes first, especially in these practice pieces. I am very intense when I first start painting, so the eyes are a really good place for me to start. It's the place that requires the most detail because I want them to be the most lifelike of the whole painting. The way that I approach the eyes is more like a blending technique, so I start the darkest areas first and then I pull in the light, and that way the wet paint will gradually pull into the other wet paint. The next part, usually because again I'm pretty stiff when I first start painting and analytical, I start with the nose as well. This, the nose and the eyes have to be just right or it'll look like a different dog. As I mentioned, one of the things I like to do in my practice pieces and like I'm doing here in Brinkley is try different brushes. This angled brush is actually the first time I've ever played with an angled brush. I heard about it on Andrew Tischler's YouTube channel and I thought it was pretty interesting so I went ahead and ordered one. After playing with it on this one, I'm really starting to enjoy the angle brush. I think I might actually buy a couple more. <laughs> I love the fact that you can do a really nice straight line with that angle brush. So you can see I'm still playing with that angle brush, kind of seeing what else I can do. But I'm also laying in some of the darkest areas. So at this point, after I've gotten the outline of the nose and the eyes, I'm kind of loosening up a little bit and I'm seeing the colors more clearly. I really like the mop brush, which is what I'm playing with right now. It really helps me blend in the colors, especially in the first layer of paint. And even though I'm doing a one-time paint, also known as a la prima, I'm going to still blend things in on the first layer. It kind of helps them dry a little bit faster. I'm still playing a lot in the medium tones that you see in Brinkley. I'm still taking a lot of care in the eyes and the nose. I do a lot of blending of my paints while I'm actually on the canvas instead of over to the side on my palette. I think it gives it more of a natural look. I think in this painting I probably used four brushes. 
a small brush for the eyes, this angle brush, a mop brush, and then a, a large brush when I get to the background. When I do a la prima paintings, I typically have a larger palette than I would use uh, outdoors in a plein air. Just for the simplicity of the colors and I'm not having to mix them all. If I'm doing a plain air painting where I'm outside, then I have a very limited palette because I don't want to lug everything around. <laughs> Again, I'm starting to blend in my colors on the canvas so I pretty much just grab some white with perhaps a little yellow okra and some pink to start blending in the colors and some of the details. This is when notice how I'm moving my brush in the stroke of the planes of the face. This is something, even with smooth dogs, smooth haired dogs, you want to make sure that you move in the direction of the hair because there is hair there and with that movement it helps define the planes of the face. gotta stop take pictures one of the things that I found over the years is um, when I first started painting kind of before we had iPhones and all that I would use a peephole actually that you buy at the hard st hardware store and look at it from my seat and what the peephole does is it expands it out about another 10 feet or so with your iPhone you can essentially do the same thing and see the painting at a distance And that distance is really what you need to do to help identify what changes and structural changes you need to make. Just kind of moving all around the painting now just to make sure that I'm getting some of the angles right, the depth in the neck correct. One of the things I didn't want to make, I wanted to make sure that I had in here was an indication of Brinkley's uh, collar and how it was embedded in her skin. Although this is a really bad story for Brinkley, it is what defines her. What is amazing is even though she was treated so poorly, she's got that amazing, bright, wonderful, smiling face right now. Uh, uh, say cheese, okay. <laughs> I'll probably cut that. I guess it's fitting. So I'm moving back to the eyes. I've got the overall structure in, and I, like I said, I just love the eyes of animals. If you've ever had to you know, say goodbye to one and had to let them go over the rainbow bridge, you know that there's light in those eyes, there's a soul there, and you want to make sure that you capture that. I'll also go back over the nose area. What this also does is I'm defining the hard lines and soft lines. Those hard lines and soft lines help give that a three-dimensional shape. As you can see, periodically I also go back and make sure that my alignment is correct. And there I am taking another picture just to make sure that my alignment is correct. And when I first started this painting, I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted in the background. Again, this is all a prima. I'm moving fast. I'm just kind of going off the cuff. And here you see that I went ahead and changed my mind about the background. The first color, the combo that I picked was it was just too dark. I, I wanted it to be a happy painting. She is just such a happy baby in this one and I just wanted to make sure that the light and everything was captured. 
Again, I'm messing with the hard and soft edges, but using my mop brush, I can really blend in the, those colors. And this is when the painting started to pop for me. Love that bright yellow. I was using cadmium yellow light, and it was just making her pop against those pink hues. Love it. This fur baby is going to bring a lot of light and love in somebody's heart. Going back to the eyes. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, in an upcoming video I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. And this yardstick is actually one of the tips and tricks. It's a, instead of paying 30 bucks for a mall stick, you can just buy a yardstick for like two bucks, dollar fifty, whatever it was, I don't know, mine was free. <laughs> so stay tuned for some tips and tricks. Just getting some details into the teeth. You really gotta remember the planes of the teeth. Uh, it went parallel, not up and down. Checking my spacing, there's something off about that nose. I just can see it. I can't figure out what it is just yet, so we've got to go back and measure. This painting overall took me about two hours and it didn't always used to be this fast. This is 11 by 14 and typically a two hour painting probably this time last year I would have needed an 8 by 10 or like a 5 by 5 or a 10 by 10. Needless to say I would have needed smaller. Now over the year you know I've loosened up these daily paintings or painting every day really really helped. She just turned out beautiful. Hey guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and um, I hope you give it a thumbs up and share it. Spread the news about Brinkley so that we can help pay for her surgery. She is such an amazing, beautiful American pit bull who pit bulls are just given a really bad rap. Bacon, my dog, he's part, <laughs> he's laying over there on the floor. <laughs> he's part pit bull. And I can tell you, that dog is awesome. He is the sweetest thing ever, and Brinkley is incredibly sweet. No matter how bad the people treated her, she has overcome that. And I thank the Greater Huntsville Humane Society for seeing that love and that light in her eyes. And I hope that you guys will bid on this and help raise some money, raise some awareness for Brinkley and her surgery. So um, give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe at www.artfurryanimals. .art dot com and uh, again I'll have that link in the notes below and if you like what I'm doing with the Greater Huntsville Humane Society Circle of Angels as well as um, honoring canines who are serving our military and contract working dogs service dogs go to gofundme.com forward slash art for paws and donate what you can I swear all that money goes to um, creating the next portrait of those canines and I have about five or six already lined up so I would appreciate it, and I hope you love what I'm doing. Leave comments. I'm more than happy to respond to those. I love some of the ideas you guys are coming up with. So, again, um, thank you so much, and until next time, keep painting and keep creating. Thanks.